What's up guys, welcome to JS Racing. My name is Jason and in this video we'll be testing the new prototype engine that we've built. Now, uh, in the previous video, we've built the engine basically to about 99%. The last 1%, uh, funnily enough, is like the smallest thing on the engine and that is the engine oil cap, which I actually have a lot in the workshop, but none of it fits because for some reason they just decided to make this a bit wider. So. Uh, if you try to screw it in, it won't stay in place. But anyway, I've ordered that already. It's been a couple of days and it's supposed to uh, arrive today. So we'll be able to install that then. We'll be able to mount the engine, connect the throttle and the fuel line. But before we do all of that, uh, I'm gonna do a double check because first thing is over the last couple of days, I've been double checking on the uh, leakage situation with the engine because I found that uh, with this valve adjustment screw here, this is supposed to, uh, according to the uh, factory guys, it's supposed to uh, adjust the pressure of the oil that goes through the pump, okay? So it's it's a small adjustment thing, but it does connect to the fuel line, obviously, uh, not the fuel line, the oil line. So it, it was leaking a little bit. It was like a very, very small leak. So I tighten it. Now it's not showing any signs of leaking. So all I'm gonna do later is just to see if I over tighten it and uh, we'll just make some adjustments. The second thing I need to check is the uh, gear that drives the fuel pump. There was a little clip that holds it in place and I was a bit worried about that clip because it was a very flimsy, like very bad quality clip. I'm gonna have to buy a new one, but uh, unfortunately a lot of the uh, stores are now closed because of holidays. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna have to double check to make sure that it's not gonna fall off during high RPM operation. Uh, I hope it won't, and uh, that's basically it. So let's have it set on its side so that the oil can settle down because I don't plan to let the oil out. Uh, I just want to you know, open the casing up, check, and then close it so I don't have to do any oil change or anything. Um, anyway, while that's doing that, uh, let's do a recap on what is different about this new prototype compared to the old one. Now, the old one has served us quite well, has proven to be quite sturdy, and it produces a lot of power. I think we're close to about 14 or something like that horsepower. But this one, I think we can add maybe an extra one or two horsepower to it. So the biggest difference is, and the first one, obviously, is the custom-made case cover that has a built-in oil pump and also an oil filter, obviously, to you know clean the oil. And this case cover connects to a custom made crankshaft that has a conduit that connects the uh, oil line directly to the connecting rod. So the, the place where it connects the uh, crankshaft and the connecting rod, there's like this little hole that shoots the engine oil, the clean engine oil directly there. So it's like a very direct, en uh, it's a very direct lubrication. It doesn't rely on that scoop, that splash lubrication. So this is much more effective at lubricating that joint. Uh, and as a double measure to make sure that joint is very well lubricated and safe, okay, we have a connecting rod that is uh, fitted with bearings. So the bearings are nice and soft. It should be able to work with the crankshaft to provide the best, safest uh, lubrication, whatever. Anyway, the idea ultimately is just to make sure that this thing will last a long time. And it won't snap on me. It won't seize on me whatever because i've had connecting rods snap on me so this one is going to make sure that none of that is going to happen and the connecting rod is steel as opposed to the stock which is like a very soft aluminium alloy so that's going to make sure that none of that is going to happen at all now the one thing that is different about this connecting rod other than the fact that it's steel the length of it is actually one millimeter shorter so we had to get a uh piston is slightly thicker to regain the compression rate because being one millimeter shorter if you use the stock piston obviously you're going to lose a bit of compression rate so we found a thicker one to uh, fix that problem uh, the gasket we're using is a metallic gasket so it's going to be a lot thinner and hopefully we gain more compression rate that way now the cylinder head is uh, very different from the stock the stock has a small intake and exhaust. This one has a much bigger intake and exhaust. It's been ported. Uh, I did that in a previous video. And also the uh, ports have been matched. So 
uh, like the valves has, has been mated. So it should provide a very good seal. The springs are upgraded to heavier springs. The rockers are uh, 1.3 ratio rockers. And also uh, coupled with the rockers, we have a uh, camshaft that's also uh, upgraded. It's a 265 camshaft. So it's gonna give us more lift. So theoretically speaking, I don't think getting an extra two horsepower is uh, a long shot. I think we, we should be able to get that. And also with the clutch, we also did a little bit of modification. We reduced the uh, coil numbers by two to, to make it tighter so that the engagement RPM should be more than 2000 something. Hopefully it engages somewhere around like 2800 or 900, something like that. And the shoes we've cut uh, so that we can increase more contact points. Now we have nine contact points as opposed to the original six. It's a very small modification, but uh, hopefully it's going to give us much better response as we drive on track. Anyway, so uh, the engine oil has been settling for quite a while now. I think it's about time we open up the case and check those two things. Let's go. All right, so we're just going to remove the clutch. Also with the clutch, we lubricated it very well, so it should give us a bit more response and performance boost, and also it'll, it should last a bit longer as well. Check the case cover. All right, so now that the engine's ready. So I want to reiterate again, um, all these parts, they fit very well together, but it's also the very first time it's done like this. So um, let's hope it doesn't blow up in my face. <laughs> I'm quite worried because the case cover is it's the only one I have. So I don't know when I'll be able to get another set. Um, yeah, but the rest should be easy to get if anything blows up. Anyway, as we're waiting for the package, we're gonna start mounting the engine. And once it's arrived, we'll be able to install everything else. So let's go. guys so i've got everything connected uh, all the new parts have come the con computer's ready so here's a moment of truth i hope everything goes well uh i filled up the tank already there's plenty of fuel in there and uh let's start uh, filling up the uh fuel bowl first so far not working the fuel pump is not working so far i don't know why to be honest though i've never liked this kind of fuel pump but this is the only spare one I got, so. 
short. All right, guys, looks like we're having a bit of a problem with the fuel pump, so I'm gonna swap out with one of the older ones and see if it works better. So let's swap out first. <laughs> All right, so I've replaced the uh, fuel pump, although this is not exactly my favorite fuel pump because the lines are so awkward. But uh, anyway, hope this works. Let's pump some fuel into the fuel bowl first. Am I seeing any action? No. Okay, so it's very odd. Let's do a few more pump. Oh, no, 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 there's suction. Just not very strong. Okay, so I just changed the post line to here. I took the adapter from another engine and put it here. So now I'm getting the pulse directly from the uh, engine oil uh, crank, crankshaft chamber, you know. So I'm no longer using this side as the uh, <coughs> pulse. Let's see if this post line is going to improve the suction of the pump. Oh yeah, it's super good, I think. Is it? Not really. Not that much better. Do any of you guys have this problem? I mean, is it a seal problem? I mean, let me check. Wow, the intake side is very loose. Is it 20 on this side though? It's still very loose. All right, so uh, I've redone the uh, intake lash. Seems like I had a bit of a problem, so let's see if that improved the suction. Oh, it did. Holy shit. See. The suction it does seem a lot better. It just doesn't want to go into the pump. Come on, bro! Oh my god! Keep going. There you go. Finally, Jesus Christ. That was painful. Holy shit. Oh my God. All right guys, so that was painful. I've uh, pulled this pulley so much that this is already a bit wonky. So I'm gonna have to fix it later on. But anyway, it's time to test if this starts properly. And if it does, does it run well? I'm hoping it doesn't have any uh, issues or strange sounds anyway. So let's go. Oh, it started really quick. Well, it starts well. Anyway, you guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.